All right. What's going on, everybody? We're back again here live, coming to you on two systems. Right now, we're broadcasting, as are always, our Tuesday morning live stream on the Spur Coffee channel on YouTube, <laughs> as well as uh, we're going live now as well, simulcasting on Kumu in the Philippines. So great to see all of you out there. And for those of you who are watching from the Philippines, this is going to be a nosebleed session because my Tagalog is very bad. So but it's all we're all talking English. So but feel free to talk Tagalog. That doesn't matter to me. I'm all good with that. So thanks for tuning in. I'm Jay and uh, I run Spro Coffee in Baltimore, Maryland. And we're here doing a live stream every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. on the YouTube channel and I guess now at Kumu. So welcome. Today we'll be, as, as every day, we talk about coffee and drink coffee as well as answer questions that you may have about coffee. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Happy to answer them. Happy to talk about coffee. Anything you want to talk about, let me know. We we'll also have our topic of the day, which is uh, today we're talking about freezing coffee. And uh, it's a little bit of a, oh, oh, sorry. It's a little bit of a... I don't know if it's if it's controversial, but you know, it's, there's definitely contention in the world about whether or not people should be freezing coffee or not. Uh, uh, spoiler alert: I'm in favor of it. I have no problem with it. So today, but we're going to start off before we get into that. We're going to start off with our blah 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 with um, brewing coffee. And today we're going to use one of my favorite brewers, the Avid Clever. And as you can see here, the Clever is quite stained because I use this quite a lot. It's really just a great and easy way that I think to brew coffee um, at home or at your office or wherever you want. And, and it's a really super simple way to do it. All right, let me grab our risers here. And today's coffee is the, what's it called? What, what's it called? It's, um, oops. Today's coffee is the Ortiz 1800 from uh, Granitos de Altura del Ortiz in uh, Tarazú, Costa Rica. Really good friends of ours. They do wonderful stuff down there. This is a white honey. And white honey, in case you're not familiar with it, white honey is a type of processing where they strip the coffee cherries, or they strip the coffee seed from the cherries, leaving the mucilage, the pulpy matter around it. And... Um, and then they dry it. But in the, in the case of the white honey, so there's different degrees, right? So there's a layer of mucilage, which is kind of like grape pulp covering the seed. And you must remove it depending on the type of honey processing. So if you leave all of it on, typically people call that black or red honey. And then as you strip it off slowly, there's orange, yellow, white. So the different levels, I mean, red, yeah, red, orange, level, red, orange, yellow, white. So the lighter the color, the more of the mucilage they strip off. So the white, they leave the least amount of mucilage on, and then they dry the coffee and under. Actually, in this case, they dry it out in the sun on raised patios. And uh, KP94, yo, seven. actually, this is the second live that we're doing. We did a uh, last Tuesday, same time. So we're planning to do every Tuesday at, uh, what is it, in Manila? Must be 10 p.m. right in the Philippine time. So it's 10 a.m. in Maryland. I think it's 10 p.m. there. So, you know, before you head out to the club, you can hang out with me a bit on a Tuesday night. <laughs> All right. So the. Um, so that's that's basically the white honey process. So we're going to take that coffee and we've got our clever. And if you haven't used the clever, clever is a really a nice and simple way to brew coffee. It's basically a full immersion type of brewing where. We have this vessel that holds it. There's actually a little uh, valve at the bottom that opens up when you place it on top of your cup that allows the liquid to flow through. And so we could just put it all the coffee in here, but we use a filter that then filters the, the coffee to make it clean. Otherwise it's like a French press and you have all this sediment and, and essential oils that make it a little bit heavier. So it just, it just creates a different cup without it. So we're gonna place the filter. We're folding it at the seams to make it sit better. And KP, you're saying you got some reminders. Drop those down in the comments. I'd like to know what you think about the, 
the cover photo. I'm still trying to understand how the Kumu thing works and really the best way to utilize it. It's completely different to me, like very, very new. So here's the coffee. We're going to use this coffee. It's relatively coarsely ground. And this is a, you know, we go for a light medium roast on this. So nice aromatics. And then we're using, we're going to make a 12 ounce cup or 350 mils. So we're using tw uh, 24 grams of coffee. And our, our basic ratio is we think of coffee in ounces, like brews in ounces. So three, a 12 ounce brew, we just multiply that number, the 12 ounces by two grams. And that gives us the amount of coffee we're going to use. So 12, co 12 ounces of coffee, we need 24 grams, right? So hopefully that makes it make sense. And on the YouTube side, you know, you know, how are you, man? Good to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Great to have you with us today. How are things in your part of the world? We're breaking, we're making coffee here as always on Tuesdays. And um, all right, so that's it. So we've got the coffee in here. And um, <laughs> hmm. so it smells good. Now we're gonna take our boiling water and we're gonna add it on here and we're just gonna set our timer for three minutes, right? So let's do three minutes. One, two, three. And then we're gonna add our water and start our timer. So we're adding just a little bit to let the bloom happen. And um, I see that the KP is telling me that the to relive because your cover photo is not of. Could you tell me more about what's not advisable or what is advisable? What's the best way to approach that? That way I can um, uh, be a little bit more understanding of exactly what to do. All right, now keep he says he sent the guidelines but i'm not when you say you sent it is there sorry I'm, I'm very new to this is there a box somewhere that i should be looking at like a message box here on the app or is it being sent to email so now we've added the water we're going to add the lid and we're just going to let that sit so we let it steep for three minutes and then we're really looking for a four minute brew time that we will then allow the um, the coffee to steep. So as the coffee steeps for three minutes, then we will, once that three minutes is up, we're going to then place it on the decanter where it will open the valve and then allow the coffee to flow through. We're going to give it about 30 to 45 seconds for it to flow through. So that should give us a, a brew, total brew time between three and a half to four minutes. KP, I'm happy to do that. Just let me know where the uh, the guidelines you sent it to. So evidently there's a problem with the, the, the image that I'm using for the, the live stream. Yes, yes, I understand that it is impossible to end your live if you can't change your cover photo. Um, what I'm interested to know, you said you sent the guidelines about it, but I'm asking where should I go to find those guidelines so that I can make sure that I'm doing whatever it is that I need to do correctly. That way, okay, did you send it to my email or did you send it? Um, is there a is there an onboard uh, message server here on the app that I should be looking for? Sorry, I'm not very. I'm still trying to figure out exactly how the Kumu system works. My apologies on that. Oh, okay, let me see that. Check your message here. Oh, there we go. All right, we're going to, oops. So as I said, we're going to take this here, place it on top of our decanter, and it's going to then do this. All right. Um, okay, that's not it. Message. Oh, here we are. Okay, let's see. Uh, 
I am reading through the messages so that I can get this done correctly. Tap the curly dog, tap cover, add cover photo. All right, all right. We'll be back in just a moment here on the Kumu system so that we can get this done correctly. Can, we take, can I take a picture? Is that what I'm supposed to do? Take a picture, let's see. Okay, let's go back to the, where's the line? There it is. Okay, we'll be back in just a moment, everyone. Let me just figure out how to end this correctly. All right, be back in a sec. Live. Okay, well now we're back again. Those of you on the YouTube side, thanks for, for bearing with me at the moment. And uh, now we're back again. We're making like we're making coffee. So those of you who are joining us now on the Kumu once again, we're back. We had to change some settings because KP was telling me there's a problem with the 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 the, the picture. So want to make sure that that's all right. So what we're doing, we're brewing now coffee from Costa Rica with the Avid Clever, and the Clever is finishing up its brew we're now at just about four minutes so that's a good thing thanks for coming back all right so this is the clever and so as you can see the clever has this little valve here that allows the dripping to come through we'll put that aside and now we've got our coffee the coffee's here nicely brewed and our little glass so if you're just joining us, every, we, we do this live every Tuesday morning on East Coast time, which is in Manila. It's what, 10 p.m. there Tuesday night? So if you're, well, if you're just joining us in from Manila, thank you very much for joining us. And on the Philippines, my apologies to you because we're all a nosebleed. We're just a nosebleed channel. Not very good. At, my Tagalog is not very good. All right, let's have a smell. Mm, nice floral, the florality, a little bit of like fruitiness, like a light tropical fruitiness, some good like medium body. It's also a little bit on the brighter side, right? So there's a nice juicy acidity to the coffee. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you love saying that um, the coffee looks good. And one of the nice things about this coffee is one of my favorites. This is a place called um, um, Finca Ortiz 1800. So 1800 meaning it's at 1800 meters above the Tarazu Valley. And it's run by three sisters who are um, who are just wonderful people from the Calderon Martinez family. And um, yeah, yeah, really fantastic, fantastic. They're in Santa Maria de Dota in uh, Tarazu. I've been there a few times and it's just a wonderful, wonderful three sisters that, that do this all. And um, yeah, yeah, so strictly hard bean, 1800 meter growth. You know, it's it's along the uh, Cordillera de the Cordillera de Talamanca range of, of mountains, so it's usually crisp and orangey and kind of mango. A little bit of mango notes, or I mean, uh, mandarin notes, not mango, mandarin. That kind of like citrusy notes, you know, are very nice. All right, so that's pretty much a great coffee to to be to be drinking. And um, so the big topic for today's uh, live stream is about freezing coffee and ways to preserve roasted coffee for your enjoyment. And a lot of people tend to think that freezing coffee is just the wrong way to go. And I think sometimes people get a little bit confused with freezing and refrigeration. Now, if you take your coffee and you put it in your refrigerator, that's definitely not the ideal manner to store your coffee. Inside the refrigerator, it's at a low enough temperature so the especially if your coffee is ground, it acts as an absorbent material, meaning that it acts like how we use baking powder in the fridge to absorb odors of the food, off odors of, of anything in the refrigerator. 
your coffee will act like that in the refrigeration zone. So that's um, if you're right, right around 40 degrees Celsius, 38, 40, 35, whatever, that's a refrigeration zone. It's going to act as a absorbent material. So you don't want to do that. However, if you want to preserve your coffee, I recommend freezing for most applications. And here's why. The freezing process really allows you to hold coffee almost indefinitely for preservation. So let's say, if you're not too familiar with coffee, like, you know, you get coffee, well, you, you have green coffee, and then you roast that coffee. Let's say you roast that coffee on Monday, and let's say that Monday, or you roast it on December 1st. Let's use that. You roast the coffee on December 1st, and that coffee is, of course, super fresh. Now, after you've roasted coffee, there's typically a period of five to seven days of what we call degassing. And because of the roasting process, a byproduct of that is the off-gassing by the coffee of CO2, of carbon, di car of carbon dioxide. And that off-gassing of carbon dioxide from the coffee actually can occlude and prevent you from tasting the actual flavors, the best flavors of that coffee. So typically, we allow, a lot of us really like to let the coffee kind of rest for seven to 10 days or five to seven days and then start to taste the coffee and see how it is. So let's say you've got a period then from, let's say, day seven out to day 21 from roasting where the coffee theoretically reaches its peak of flavor. So you could take that coffee at any point in time, freeze it, and it will hold it at that position indefinitely. So let's say as you're you get your coffee and you, it's roasted on the first and you wait the seven days for degassing and you start tasting it each day, each day you're making a cup of coffee and you find that, man, on day 12, it's super delicious, like super delicious. If you were to take that coffee at that moment, wrap it up real tight in its bag or whatever container you, you're holding it in, place it into your freezer and hold it, it will stay at that point pretty much indefinitely. Like I have yet to, I've, I've been doing roast, I have been, I have been freezing roasted coffee for over 15 years now in mostly commercial applications and a lot of times at home, actually. Um, mainly because, you know, I, because I'm in the coffee business, I get a lot of friends and people that I meet that, that want to give me coffee. They're giving me coffee samples from their own companies. Um, they're just gifting me coffee for whatever reason. I'm very grateful. However, it's just me. So I'm, I don't drink as much coffee. I, I don't drink that much coffee. So it's very difficult for me to keep up. So I will typically freeze pretty much all the coffee that's given to me because then I know it's, it, I don't have to worry about degradation as much. So what I'm saying is that let's say you decided of this coffee that you've roasted or that you've obtained at day 12, you find that it's got this beautiful flavor that you really enjoy. Take that coffee, keep it wrapped tight, put it in your freezer and let it be. That coffee will hold at that day point yeah, pretty much indefinitely. Like I, it, I've done it. So back in 2009, before I opened the, the Hamden shop, as we were preparing for that. So in all, April of 2009, we, I already knew that we were going for it. So we were, you know, negotiating a contract in April. And so I, as I was attending the Specialty Coffee Association show, I ran into a friend of mine, a guy that may, if you're, if you're a big internet coffee reader or follower, you might know him, James Hoffman. And so James and I were hanging out in, in uh, I think we're in Atlanta or wherever we were back then, 2009 was maybe Portland or Seattle. And he, ha he gave me a bag of his eight Estrellas espresso. I think it was an espresso blend, but he, you know, James owns a place called um, Square Mile Coffee. And he gave me a bag of their, their eight Estrellas and just gave it to me. And I thought, oh, thanks, man. I really appreciate that. But I thought, you know what, let me take this coffee and I'm going to cup it critically. So I took it home. When I got home, I cupped it. I critically evaluated it, gave it, you know, a full rundown, tasting notes, scoring, and everything. Then I took that coffee. This is still April 2009. I put that coffee in my freezer at home and just left it there. 
fast forward now to the fall and now it's um october 2009 so six months it's been sitting in the freezer untouched i had been training a new group of of baristas for the past month or so at by this point because we started early 20 early september and now this is almost to the middle of of october it was october 10th and every week we would do coffee cuppings and uh, with my staff and you know by this point they had really gotten the the hang of like evaluating coffee, thinking about critically tasting coffee and, and, and all that. So I brought them for, I brought that, put this, I put this coffee on the table as one of the coffees for that day. We typically would do a round of coffees, you know, multiple coffees on the table. And, you know, I wanted to see what they had to say about it. So I brought them out and these, I'll show you the, unfortunately, if you're watching on the, Kumu's broadcast, I can't show it to you because I don't have a way to, to connect it. But have, however, if you're watching on our YouTube broadcast on the Spur Coffee channel, you can I can show you this a lot easier. So here's the, the actual results from the tasting for this one coffee. So you can, if you want to look at it carefully or if you want to hit the pause button if you're watching this on the replay, you can see here the different notes for fragrance, aroma, break, brightness, flavor, body, and aftertaste. But basically, and then I asked after cupping them and comparing the notes for everyone. So the, the different flavor notes of woody, chocolate, yogurt, you know, smoky, I think it says cheese combo, <laughs> you know, sweet, syrupy, um, mahogany. There was a lot of notes that matched what I had written down back in April of that year. And unfortunately, I was trying to find the notes, the actual physical notes from myself as well as the staff, but in a stack of like, I have a whole stack of tasting notes from, from this era, and I just couldn't find it yesterday when I was looking for it. Unfortunately, I wish I could, because it was really, to even to me, it was super shocking that people would have the same flavor notes for the coffee that I had frozen for six months. But I asked them to give a, a, a to, to look at the notes and then put together a description that said, Ada Estrellas is an aromatic coffee with a complex, smoky, yet tangy fragrance. Its low acidity allows for sweet, balanced flavor concentrated on notes of autumn. Its woodsy and full body leaves a pleasant aftertaste of semi-sweet chocolate and caramel. I mean, delicious. Sounds delicious. I mean, and we're talking about a coffee now that was six months old. Frozen. So uh, when people say that, that, that freezing is a, is, is a non-starter, it's a bad, it's a bad thing. It's, it, that's a non-starter for me because it's like, unless you've tried it and experimented with it, how would you even know? Another thing is people talk about is, you know, some people get a little bit obsessive about it. And if you happen to visit our, or my other channel called Ono Coffee, which is the sister channel to the Spurrow Coffee channel, we've got a series of coffee, of, of, we've got a series of episodes called Coffee Wonderland. And it's a, it's a, it's a six series episode where I go to visit one of my friends, Greg Scase, who is the inventor of the Scase device, which is this industry like standard as standard device to measure temperature and pressure of espresso machines. But Greg is also just a, a tinkerer of, and he's got an incredible selection of coffee machines in his house. Like at the time that I was there a year ago, he, he had five commercial espresso machines in his basement. But anyway, so in one of the episodes, he talks about how he manages his coffee and he's also doing the freezing. So some people talk about, you know, oh, the, if you freeze coffee, there's going to be freezer burn. Well, here's the reality. There, that is something that is almost, I'm going to say, impossible to happen. So what is freezer burn? Freezer burn is when your product, your frozen product, loses moisture content because of exposure to air. Now, there is the possibility of oxidation to occur and some kind of effect of negative effect on the coffee due to 
air exposure, which is why we, we encourage you know to put it keep it in your bag, rolled tightly or in a container, sealed tightly as you can. However, for moisture damage, th that is just that's just not possible. I mean that that just seems ridiculous. And here's why: we're very used to thinking about like freezer burn when it comes to like say frozen meats. And you've seen that you've pulled frozen meat out that you've set, let sit there for a long time. And you can see it's kind of got that whitish striations on the meat. It just looks like, or brownish and it looks, it looks damaged. This is because let's say for beef, beef is a six between 60 to 75% moisture content. So it's majority water, right? Where roasted coffee is about two to three percent moisture content. So the moisture content is extremely low. And let's say, for example, if you ever, and I tried this years ago because I thought I had these beautiful hardcore ver, these green beans, right? I had these beautiful green beans from a local farmer. I was like, man, I got so much of it. I need to preserve it. So I thought, you know what? Why don't I just take these beans? I'm going to vacuum pack them. I'm going to put them in a bag and I'm going to freeze them. Great idea. Problem is, you know, slow freezing in the manner that we did, like you take the beans, you put them in your freezer and you kind of slow and probably also the, the force of the, the vacuum packing, you know, basically. And then the freezing where the water, and now I guess some vegetables, of course, are higher concentration of moisture. So probably the 80, 90% range. As the water inside the cells froze and expanded, it destroyed the cellular structure, which then, resulted in really just mealy, nasty tasting. Well, not, the taste wasn't nasty. It was the mouthfeel of the green beans was just destroyed and just terrible. So not the way to go. However, with coffee at 2 to 3% moisture, there's just not enough moisture for anything to happen. Yes, there can be some crystallization of the moisture inside the cells, but it's so minute compared to the size, it's not going to do anything illicit to the beans. That just doesn't happen. What people, some people talk about is condensation. And that's something that could be happening, especially if you're in a situation, let's say like here in, in, in Maryland, Maryland during the summertime or the Philippines, most any time of the year where there's a high level of moisture in the air. If you take frozen beans out of the, out of the, the freezer, and you let this sit for a while, condensation can, can form. I don't know how much the effect that has to it, on it. I doubt that it has much effect, even if you were to refreeze it. Um, so, you know, even if you're keeping whatever quantity frozen, like I don't recommend, I, re I recommend taking it out, portioning out what you need right away, and then returning your vessel, your coffee to the freezer. That way you have very little variation in dips in temperature, right? If you're taking out the container, even if it's a small bag, and you measure out the 24 grams or 48 grams or whatever number grams you might need for that coffee, and you put the bag back, I mean, if you're doing that with a reasonable amount of time, you're not going to have any kind of issues. I don't suspect any issue. Even, even if you were to leave the coffee sitting out for a few minutes after you've portioned it before you grind, I doubt you'll have any problems. I mean, I, I've not, not seen issues with the grinding at all. I mean, again, moisture content is super low, super low. It's not like you have a glass of water and ice that you're leaving on the counter in the middle of summertime and it's, you know, beating and sweating and all that and like, you know, creating a, a puddle on your tabletop. It's never going to get like that. And then some people talk about taking that coffee and then thawing it out before grinding it. I, I'm not one that really believes in that. I say take it out, put it in the grinder, and let it do its thing right away. What we always battle in coffee is, you know, how heat can affect the coffee. You know, when you've got frozen coffee, you've got the best of both worlds. I mean, now you've got coffee that's super cold. It's not, it's not going to be... It's not going to overheat the coffee. It's not going to cause any issues that way. Your frozen coffee is going to go through those burrs and it's going to grind it. And it's still going to feel relatively cool comparatively, right? It's not going to be the hot or warm 
ground coffee that you sometimes get. So I, I don't I don't worry about any of that. I think it works perfectly well. And some people say, oh, you know, it's frozen and, you know, you might damage your birds. And, you know, it just to me, that just seems, again, you know, a lack of understanding of chemistry and, and physics for all for that. I mean, we're talking about coffee, which has a certain hardness. And somehow I'm supposed to believe that the hardness of frozen coffee is somehow greater than that of a stainless steel of stainless steel or even ceramic. I, I don't see that. I don't, I've never seen that happen. And I'm, I'm, I'm questionable. I question whether that's, I, I think that's just bunk. I think it's bunk. <laughs> so how's our coffee doing? Our coffee's doing really nice, nice and mellow. Likes a bit of juiciness, not too bright, just kind of smooth, really smooth, balanced. The citrus is on the lighter side. Yes, yeah, so if you're watching on on, our, on YouTube or on Kumu, if you have any questions about coffee, I'm here to help. So feel free to ask coffee or anything related to food even. We can talk about that as well. Or do we do this? I do this live stream on our Spur Coffee channel here on YouTube. <laughs> as well as now on Kumu every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time, which is 10 p.m. Manila time. So bring your questions and uh, don't be shy. It's okay if you, if you have nosebleed. I'm very patient. I'm very patient. Oh, my goodness, what a good, what a nice coffee this really is. Yeah, so that's that's kind of the basic deal that I think on freezing coffee. I think freezing is a great way to go. I definitely recommend keeping your coffee in the frozen state as packaged as possible. Now, a lot of people will say, you know, transfer to other vessels. If you're buying your coffee in like a typical Mylar bag, I leave it in that. I, I don't even bother taking it out. I pretty much leave the coffee that's given to me in whatever container, whatever packaging they, they've given to me, I just take it and toss it in the freeze, the freezer. And then I just use it as I, so I, I don't really worry too much about that. Like, I think sometimes people, the coffee geeks can get a little bit too geeky about it and like get too much like, oh, I need to do this and I need to do that. And I'm just like, some of them buy specialized containers and spend all this money. And it's like, why? Why are you doing that? There's no need for that. There's no need for that kind of craziness. But, you know, there's a different, you got a different perspective when you're doing it for 20 years. All right, let's see, let's see some, <clears throat> let's see some questions out there. We got any questions going on? I'm going to find here some questions. Uh, there's no question there. Yeah, there's no, what's this all going on here? So here's a question for that that's out there. Richard Fitzgerald asks, how long should I expect a clear plastic Hario dripper to last? I'm on my fourth one after about 12 months. They have all broken at the narrowest point of the V. They fall apart, no force over dro or dropping involved. Wow, a clear plastic Hario dripper. You know, I have not had that problem. I have a, I have a plastic Hario dripper here and it's lasted pretty well. Even this, even this clever dripper, which is pretty darn old now. Like this is, we were using this at the shop for a while, which is especially why it's colored, right? It's, um, it's, so it's been heavily used on, on a daily basis, making multiple, multiple drinks daily. So it's well used. And you know, I, I don't, why we wear out? I don't know what's wearing out then. Unless somehow you're, it says it's broken at the narrowest point of the V. I mean, in the V60, there's nothing really to, 
it, it's not really, I can't imagine it breaking. So I'm not sure why. I mean, you just got to take care of it and just wash. And If you own a fellow Ode, what do you think of it long term? I don't know. I don't know. I don't use that. Sorry about that. I have used the fellow kettle. And actually, I was at, um, I was doing some training for a company called One Do Coffee. And I was at their facility and they had the Ode kettle and we were doing some cuppings and filling the, the cupping cups. And I ended up using the Ode kettle at one point to fill them. And you know what? There's the kettle itself seems perfectly normal and perfectly fine. What I didn't, what I really found super annoying about the fellow kettle was the fact that it had a restrictor in its, in the spout and that restrictor, you know, it, it's designed to restrict the flow of water through the spout you know, especially if you want to control your, your pour, you know, the, amount, the rate of water flow to your coffee, that's good because you can, no matter how hard you pour, only so much is coming through. And I personally found that, well, gosh, quite frankly, I found it infuriating because, you know, I, I'm, I'm very capable of controlling my own water flow, <laughs> mainly because I've been doing it for so long. That, that's, that's really what that means. And I mean, I, I, sometimes I need to pour faster, meaning I need to pour heavier, like in a cupping situation. I want to make sure that as I'm pouring into the cupping cup, I can get a nice vortex rolling so I can totally, you know, wet all of the coffee thoroughly as I'm filling the vessel. And, I, and these vessels are small like this one. So there's only so much time and room that you have. So it's it was a little bit frustrating to use i was like oh man all this money all this money being spent but i guess if you didn't have the restrictors people would think that i spent all this money and it doesn't have, i still have to like you know i still have to learn how to pour correctly i don't know <laughs> let's see what other questions people have out there in the world we're looking them up If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Oh, if you if you if you're a coffee professional, you're following along what's going on. the The price of coffee is definitely starting to climb for green coffee. So, you, if you, you consumers, if you're on the consumer side, you should be in your specialty coffee. You probably will be. You should be expecting to see that soon in your part of the world. Yeah, good, good. All right. How come I don't have? I'm looking up. All right, so we're just looking up here some information for <laughs> we are making coffee, delicious coffee here. So what's going on in your world? Here in the, in the United States, we've been facing, well, in my world, we've been facing some interesting questions. Um, I happen to belong to the the movie production union here. And actually, I'm, even though I'm not, I'm not active anymore, I'm still very in touch with the, the issues that, that our industry faces and I work with a lot of friends that are still in the business. And it's been an interesting time where we've been working. There's been a lot of uh, problems with uh, people getting killed at work and contract rene renegotiations. And uh, finally the contract was came through and a lot of people were very upset with it and were not happy. And they have to do this, this um, ratification vote. 
And that vote passed surprisingly yesterday. And so people are upset. People are upset. I don't know where that's going to lead. But it's interesting, interesting times. So also Thanksgiving's coming up. And if you're, um, well, at least in America, we have this thing called Thanksgiving. And it's, my friends who were Native American do not celebrate Thanksgiving, which probably makes a lot of sense. Because, you know, what do they have to thank, be thankful for? Their land was taken from them. But you know, I have a new video coming out next week on the Ono Coffee channel that is about how to brew coffee in bulk. So basically, one of the things that I find people having difficulty with, even myself, is that especially if you're someone that likes specialty coffee and you want to spread the word of specialty coffee, you know, everyone's making coffee in their air press, air press, air, air presses and V60s and all that. But the problem is they're doing it one cup at a time. And if you're trying to get coffee for your family and friends at gatherings like Thanksgiving or Christmas, making a, making coffee for everyone one at a time is just maddening. Like I, I don't do it. Like I wouldn't do that craziness. However, I came up with some tips and, and easy ways for you to brew coffee on a large scale for very little money, you know, for 20 bucks or so and using what you normally have available to you, you can make coffee for your entire family quickly, easily, with very little must or fuss. And that's coming out next Monday on the whatever date that is, the 22nd, I think it is. So be sure to check that out. Um, what else is coming out? We're working on some other videos coming out for, we got, oh, we got the gift guide video. The gift guide video is out on the Spur Coffee channel. So 12 great ideas for the holiday season. So if you have any, if you're trying to think about what to get your coffee lover this season, that's the way to go. Go check it out. It's, it's live now on SpurrowCoffee.com or Spur Coffee on YouTube. And um, that'll be a great one I mean, on Ono Coffee on YouTube. We're Spur Coffee on YouTube. But check that out. And um, I think you'll find that to be quite interesting. Other than that, I think that's it for today. Thank you very much for tuning in. Really appreciate you spending the time with us here on Kumu as well as on the Spur Coffee on YouTube channel. We do this live stream for coffee and question and answer and talk about coffee every Tuesday, Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern here on YouTube as well as on Kumu, which means that it's 10 p.m. there in, in the Philippines. So thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate being with us again. Yeah, see you next week. And if you're watching on the replay, thank you very much. Really appreciate you watching us. If you have any questions, drop them in the, in the, in the comments below, and I'll be happy to answer and uh, help you with any questions you may have. All right, well, thank you very much, and uh, see you next time.